ever thought about encouraging a few more native critters into your own backyard? While lots of our native wildlife is now restricted to offshore predator-free islands, there are still plenty of native animals that are happy to live side by side with us. Let's find out how to look after our wildlife locals and bring them just a little closer to home. to having native wildlife in your garden is providing food all year round. So things like kofi are great for the spring when they burst into those beautiful yellow blooms and then in the summer things like pahutakawa and rata are really good for the nectar feeders like tui or bellbirds. How'd you go? Good? Although most of us think of bird life when we talk about encouraging wildlife into our backyard, New Zealand actually has more species of lizard for its climate than anywhere else in the world. There's a way that you can encourage our geckos and skinks into your backyard and it's really easy, it's just about providing them a nice safe home to live. One of the ways that you can do that is to plant things that are close to the ground and provide a lot of cover, like this little Moolumbekia plant. These tend to have berries and flowers on the inside and that's easy for the, the geckos and the skinks to come through and take a nibble on. They also eat invertebrates and of course being cold blooded they need somewhere to come out and bask in the sunshine. Now you can use bits of bark, bits of half round bark that you would probably get of your firewood but you can also use these bitumen tiles. Now what they do is they heat up during the day and they also provide somewhere safe for the lizard to hide from in case there's predators around. So it's just a matter now of lying these down in the garden and finding somewhere that the lizards might like to live. Do you want to help me guys? New Zealand also has some pretty amazing insects and of course probably the most famous one of these would be the wetter. Now there are around 70 species of wetter here in New Zealand and there are some really easy ways to encourage them to live in your backyard and it's as simple as providing them with a wetter motel. Should we have a look and see if we've got anyone home? Whoa! Someone was home! Where are the wetter's ears? Where are... I can see! They're, they're just there. there. You think they're on his head? Yeah. I know. I, I can see on them. The That's right. The wetter's ears are actually on his knees. And if you look really closely there, you can see those little holes. Oh, I can see oh, them. If you don't have a flash wetter motel like that one at home, there's some really easy ways you can do it. Something like, this is just a piece of bamboo, right? You might know somebody who's got bamboo at home. Have you seen them there? There is, I know, and if we are good, we might be able to get them out. What do you think? Oh! There's two! There's two! That's a girl one! That's yeah. exactly right, Benji. That is a girl one. Now, how did you know that? Because it's only got one from the bag. That is right, and this is a young boy one. So she's grumpy, eh? See her legs? Ah! Uh, look yeah. at the little one. <laughs> Now the other thing I bet you didn't know about Weta is that they can jump. They're really, really good jumpers. Look how happy she is. No, I won't let them bite me. Because the Weta just need a small little place to crawl into, uh, somewhere up a tree is a really good place to hang your Weta motel and they'll happily live there for as long as they feel like it. You don't have to live next to a national park to have an abundance of wildlife in your backyard. All you need is a safe place with plenty of access to food and water and away from pests and you can have your own thriving community of wild neighbours for you and your family to enjoy.